Today we are here in Adventure Park Hellendorn, home of the Balagos and the longest river rapids of the Netherlands. Today we're going to find out how this river rapids actually works, how they guarantee an exciting ride and how they make sure you get the best waves. The first artificial river rapid opened to the public in an American theme park back in 1980. The basics are actually very simple. Water is pumped up to a higher elevation. From there, it flows back down to its lowest point. But some flowing water doesn't exactly make an interesting experience. That's why we're here today in Adventure Park Hellendorn to find out how the water is manipulated to make for an exciting experience. This ride is 480 meters long, and each second, 4.5 cubic meters of water flows through its trough. That equals 15 filled bathtubs. That is insane. In a couple of moments, we are going to start up this attraction together with the technical services of the park. But let's find out how we make the perfect wave. And for that, Jernan is going to explain how the water will flow through the rapid river is being determined by the field of fluid dynamics. And what is of importance is the shape of the channel and the slope down, but also behind me you can see that in the curves the channel is slightly banked. And what is of key importance is the width of the channel. The narrower the channel, the higher the water velocity will be. In such a rapid ride, of course, you want to have spectacular waves on the water surface. And these waves are being created by these kind of beams at the bottom of the channel. And what you can see very nicely here is that you have these beams in all sorts of shapes. So here we have some round beams and some square ones. And what you can also see is that the spacing of these beams is different everywhere. Here they are more closer together and there they are more spaced more uh, apart. And uh, depending on how this is done exactly, you create different waves at the water surface. Let's have a look how a beam at the bottom of the channel influences the wave pattern at the surface. My colleagues of the Department of Civil Engineering have performed some simulations in which they investigated this. And what you can see very nicely in this simulation of just a single beam is that the maximum wave height appears slightly after the beam and that this wave pattern then damps out gradually. So what happens if we put multiple beams after each other? Well, you can imagine that if this distance is very large, the two beams do not really influence each other. And when we put them too close, there is not really a difference when we use just one or two beams. In fact, there is a very precise distance uh, in between the two beams where the wave pattern is the most extreme. We're about to switch on the attraction together with the people of Hellendorn. Right here is the basin with all the water that the attraction needs. There are two pumps and they pump up the water to the top of the ride. Step one is to start one of the pumps to get the water flowing. Then the other pump starts as well. This attraction is the largest consumer of electricity in the park at 250 kilowatts an hour. To prevent a peak on the grid, they first switch on the one pump and then the other. Of course, we want the water of the attraction to be clean. That is done in these two large red sand fillers. Now, if you ever lose your baseball cap when you're in the ride, it will end up in here and they'll catch it later in the day. It would be a shame to just keep this clean water only for the attraction here. 
so they use it in two other attractions also. Back there we have the Donderstein roller coaster, which has geysers, and they use it for the geysers. And there is a children's water play area, and they use it in there too. Come on, let's switch on the special effects. Throughout the ride, you will find these sensors. These sensors measure the height of the water. If all the sensors measure okay, and then it's ready for the guests. When the correct water height is reached, this inlet will start moving the water up this waterfall so the waterfall will actually start running. This is the place where the wide section changes into the narrow section. This means that the boats in the wide section move slower than the boats in the narrow section. To give the boats a little extra push, there are these drums on both sides. They turn and it just gives that little edge so the boat keeps moving faster. The conveyor system has four belts. One long one on the other end and three here, of which this is the last one. And this is the hold belt. This sensor here measures the dispatch of the boat and makes sure that the computer gives the correct signal for dispatching the next boat down the slope right here. So now we know that there's one way of making waves by these beams. But there is another way of making waves, isn't there, Jornam? Yes, indeed. And that is thanks to this wave maker. And let me explain to you how this works. We have this large plate over here suspended from bearings on both sides. And this is going to swing back and forth. Um, it's powered by this motor. And what is really essential is that the speed with which it will swing back and forth determines the wave pattern. So I've got this rectangular container filled with water here. And I can show you very nicely that the most spectacular waves occur when I rock back and forth the container with a very specific speed. So now we know how to create waves with the wave maker, but we can actually calculate how to tune the speed of the wave maker. And uh, in order to do that, we need to know the width of the channel over here. So David, I need your help. Of course. Let's measure the width. Let's. If you go to that side, I will walk there. Okay. Let's see. Twelve. Okay, fantastic. So let me now calculate the optimal speed of the wave maker. We already determined before that the water depth is approximately one meter. And using the following formula, we are able to determine that the oscillating period of the wave maker should be approximately 2.5 seconds. Everything is checked and ready. Now let's activate the ride.
So now we found out how this water attraction works. It was quite amazing to see the, the speed of which the water rose and went down again. Yeah, and I really like to see the, um, all the different wave patterns throughout the ride with the beams and also near the, near the wave maker. Very interesting. So we've come to the end of our splashing episode today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye.